<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I uh, thought I'd do one of these videos where I'm just kind of doing a bit of a overview and just kind of talking through this, so this isn't exactly a tutorial. So if you're looking through a step-by-step -step guide, this isn't going to be it, but a lot of people have enjoyed these overviews, so I decided to do that here, um, although I'm going to be talking through the process on this. So we're going to be looking at this little guy, which this is a SD2 Vita board. Now you might be wondering, yeah, it looks incomplete. Well, it is complete. We're actually going to be building these ourselves here. So um, what I had done was I already put in the order and everything for these. Um, I got all my parts separately. Why? Because I wanted to have some fun building these out. So really, there's only two components you need to this. You need to get these boards custom printed. So I got these from PCB Way, I believe. And then you can get a bunch of uh, micro SD card sockets right there. Uh, these ones I got off Newegg. So altogether, it really doesn't cost all too much depending on how many you're going to be getting. Realistically, if you are somebody who's going to be actually using them, I mean, you can buy a couple of them off eBay or wherever it is um, already pre-made, which I would recommend. The reason why I'm doing this is because I find building these to be fun. I thought this would be a fun project to tackle and also a good opportunity to make at least, you know, a video or two off of this. So this is what we're doing right here. Um, for any links or references, uh, the guide I used to actually build this out, well, to uh, get the um, get the schematic, get the PCB printed and sent over here, uh, I'm going to link the guide down below in the description. And if anybody has any questions on any of the hardware I'm using here, aside from these helping hands, uh, these helping hands I got given to by someone years ago, so I can't tell you the exact model, unfortunately. But everything else, like my soldering iron and stuff, I'll have down below in the description as well, too. Um, but this is how this works right here. So in case you don't know, the PS Vita a while ago um, ended up getting Hinkaku on it, uh, which if you're on firmware 3.6, uh, that essentially means you can have custom firmware. You can enable homebrew, you can run third-party code. Uh, most excitingly though, you can dump games, you can install games, and there's a whole slew of things that you can do. Unfortunately, one of the things with the PS Vita is that the memory cards have always been expensive for it. So in comes the SD to Vita right here, um, where in short, you know, once this is done, you pop this into your game cart slot and you are able to load anything off a micro SD card. So support for it is still growing right now. It's still pretty solid and it's nice that this is so accessible. You can get these for pretty cheap as well too. Uh, some people might also question, because this is a version 1.0 board, some people might ask the difference between versions 1, 2, and 3. Functionality wise, there is no difference. It's just the way it actually looks. This is probably the worst version because even though this is to spec, this one, it's just, it's not as accessible. And even to take it out of the Vita, you have to use some tweezers and all. So you have to be careful with this board. But nonetheless, it does work. So this is how I'm going to be setting this up right here. What I've done is I've already set up a few of these, like I've uh, finished them up and all that. Um, I just took one of my uh, helping hands right here and just put it on there like so. And I'll go ahead and zoom in a bit. And then at this point, really gravity can do the rest of the work for you. So you just take this uh, board right here or the socket, you plop it on. As you can see, there's those four points, two on each side that line up. And then there's all the points right here for the micro SD card itself, and you just solder everything together. So I'm going to be doing a couple here on camera and kind of just talking through it. Um, so for this first one, I'm actually going to use some flux. And the reason why I'm using this is because I've noticed that uh, I've had better luck with flux. Although, would I recommend it? You don't, you don't necessarily need it for this. It does give you a cleaner install, um, but I'll kind of explain the process as I go through it all here. So really, you don't even have to glob that much on here. Even though, yeah, it looks like I just took a bunch, but you just need to kind of... This is actually a lot more than I use. <laughs> and then just kind of put some there. That's, yeah, admittedly a lot more than I needed. You really don't need all that much, but it's all good. We can clean it up later. And that's the reason why I actually kind of questioned the use of Flux here. Uh, I've done some with and without Flux. Uh, the end result on the ones without Flux are... Uh, well, the ones with flux are much nicer. The problem is, um, because you know this is gooey and everything, you're gonna have to clean it up, so you use some isopropyl alcohol, recommended, and uh, then you can't use it for immediate use. You're really gonna have to let it dry because you don't wanna put a wet part inside of your Vita. Um, so, all you need to do right here is let me take my soldering iron, tin it properly. I think we're ready. Almost, okay, there we go. And really at that point, you could just kind of go in 
get a little bit. That's all you need. I can even put a little bit more on there, but that's it. So you just got it on there. I kind of try and push it as far as I can into there. And once you have one point done, you can go ahead and start attacking the other points. And notice a little bit goes a long way. Just use a tiny bit of solder, just enough to get them all connected on here. If you're going to do this by hand. The problem is if you get your solder blobs too big, it won't get into the Vita. Um, I had that issue with the first one I worked on here. So that is just kind of barely crossing the threshold. So now that those points are done, it's all secured. We can now do the points that are at the end of the Vita right here. So with that, normally what I do is kind of, let's see, I have to do this upside down. Hey, Lily. My dog's just kind of coming over wondering what's going on. Yeah, that smells, doesn't it? All right. Also, admittedly, if you're not careful, you could easily bridge these points, but these points also aren't that bad. I've definitely dealt with a lot smaller when it comes to soldering, at least. So. Come on. There we go. That's another point. That's another point. So I got four more. What the hell is my dog doing? She's like running around and I just heard a box go somewhere. And that's about it. So all the work there is done, which is nice. I'm gonna put up my soldering iron. Now what you need to do for this, if you're using Flux, you absolutely need to do this. Some people also say, I know I'm probably going to get some comments where people are just like, you don't need to use flux, there's already flux inside of the, uh, inside the solder, it's rosin core. Uh, yeah, there is, but using flux like this just makes the contacts so much cleaner and really easier to solder onto, so that's why I enjoy doing this, but I'm going to take some of this and just literally go clean up all the flux residue. So again, you want to clean up all the residue. The only problem is because you're dealing with something so small right here, like the actual internals, like there is actual, you know, moisture now inside of that board. So if you're doing it this way, I really don't recommend putting it, like let, let it dry, let it dry, like leave it overnight. It's in no rush. <laughs> and I'm even gonna go just general, like generously on here. So as you can see, those are, all the points we needed to do. I can even kind of unhook it here. There we go, that's done. And one thing I've also done is I also just kind of just go over the contacts here as well. And that's about it. So our board is done, that's what it should look like. There's a little bit on this side as well too, so I'll just go ahead, clean this up real quick. Sorry if it's not the best on camera right now. Yeah. That's about it. Cool. So that is a, that is one board done. Um, again, I'm not going to be using this directly here because it is wet, but uh, that's how it looks and it looks pretty nice as well too. I am proud of that. And these solder globs look low enough to the point where it should go inside the Vita just flush enough. So that's an optimal thing right there. If you, you know, want to spend, uh, if you want to, you know, leave it overnight, let it dry, all that stuff. I know it's excessive, but you just want to be careful. Um, although, what about if you don't use any flux on here? So, thankfully I got another board right here that we can use. I'll go ahead, pop this one in, and this one I'm not going to be using any flux for this install. Uh, any liquid flux at least. I'm just going to be using my solder and soldering iron. So over this you kind of want to do the same thing, just as I said, I have it upside down like so. So that way, once I load it in, which it looks like, this one's actually having a little bit of an issue loading on there properly. It's not, yeah. Yeah, it's not sitting on there as flush as I'd like it to, admittedly. If you all can see that. Oh, it's an issue with one of the pins right here. Okay, one of the pins is bent. 
Uh, so that's why, thankfully, I bought uh, several of these, so I'll just grab another one from my stash here. So I just synced another one out of the box here. I'm going to plop it on. As you can see, that one goes flushly and cleanly on there because none of the pins are bent. So that's perfect, honestly. So what I'm going to do right here is let me clean this up. And this one I don't mind using directly off the rip. Now, you could, if you really wanted to, you could clean the contacts on here, but because this is all brand new stuff, don't really see a need to. Um, so let me go ahead, just dab that with some solder. And kind of what I do here is get it into place. There you go. Just enough so that it sticks on there, that's it. Okay, so there we go, that one's done. That one's also done, although admittedly that's not as nice as I'd like it to be. That should be fine. And number four right there. Okay, there. So all four of the contact points from the uh, uh, on the side have been completed. Now we have to actually hit this part right here, which is all of these points. Okay. So there we go. All right, so that's five down. We have another four to go. And here's another thing. As you can see, no shame to get my game, man. My, uh, my hands do shake. But you know what? I can actually get this stuff done. So I don't mind it. <laughs> as long as I can get my soldering working, I... Don't mind the handshake. Uh, looks like we do have some. There we go. They separated. All right. So if you get those, if you get a few points bridged that aren't supposed to be bridged, it's a pretty easy fix, thankfully. That one's done. That one should be done. All right. I think we're good on all of those. Let me get a better view of this here. So let me see. Hey, Lily, you want to see what's going on? All right. So, yeah, it's not as smooth as I'd like it to be, but at least with this, we do have it all working. So this would at least be fine to put on because, you know, nothing got wet. Let me go ahead and open that up. And I'm just checking my work. And, yeah, it looks like every single point on there has made contact. So we should be fine when it comes to that. So now... For anybody who's wondering, okay, what the hell does this thing do? Well, I already explained it, but I'll go ahead and show a little demonstration to also prove that it does work on the Vita. So what do we need? We're going to need a PlayStation Vita or a PlayStation TV or a Vita TV, whatever you want to call it, uh, that has Hinkaku installed on it. So yeah, my Vita is a little bit dirty because I've just been, you know, messing around with uh, all this stuff here. Haven't cared about the condition on this one too much, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, SD to Vita adapter. And right here, we take our specially formatted uh, micro SD card, slot it in like so. That works easy enough. And now, right here, it says even on the back here, uh, to back a Vita, which means you have to plop it in this way. So you just come up here. So, what we need to do is we just take the adapter and just kind of pops in like so. Actually, right here, we are experiencing an issue where one of the slot solder globs was a bit too big. It was like the one on this side. So that's preventing us from fully putting it into the Vita, which this does happen. So it doesn't happen as often if I use Flux, but then again, you know, as I said, we have to wait on that. So I'll go ahead and kind of lower this right here a bit. So after a quick edit, it looks like I will be able to pop this in, which I'm going to use my uh, Q-tip to help push it the rest of the way in, maybe. There we go. 
Alright, so it is actually inside. I know feet seems a little bit weird, so that's why to get this out because it's not like a it's, it's not as nice as a game card where you can just, you know, push it in and out. Uh, to remove it, you kind of have to use tweezers or something similar where if I want to remove it, I'm not trying to stab myself. Kind of just do something like that. But either way, what we're doing, we're going to pop it in there. If you're just going to keep it in there and not really move it around, that's totally fine. Because that way, you can still at least access the micro SD card. So what we're going to do, actually, I will keep this on here. Just to kind of show you all this. So now at this point, assuming you have, uh, right here, I have Hinkaku, I have Enzo installed, and I have the uh, SD2 Vita plugin enabled. I actually had to go in and re-enable that because I had disabled it before. Uh, what I'm going to do here just to show you all that it is reading off this, I'm going to keep this open, turn on the system. So we can turn it on. The Enzo logo pops up, as you can see right there. And if you watch this light, it flashes for a few seconds and it's done. And if it only flashes for about a second or two, that means that you are ready to rock on here. Thanks, Lily. Really appreciate it. Well, now at this point, I have the Vita unlocked and everything. Uh, I have the plugin loaded, and I'm going to start up Vita Shell. You can't use Molecular Shell for this. You can use Vita Shell. And if you look right here, I specifically have the driver where I use it as U Mass Zero. If I press X on that, I have a game right there that I can transfer over at one point. Um, and then, you know, my system volume information from Windows, and then SCEIO Trash, which is on the Vita storage itself. So, yeah, that's it right there. That shows us at least that we are ready to rock with this. So, um, there's a couple drivers that are out. One of them, it mounts us as UMass Zero. The other one will mount it as UX Zero, so it would effectively replace your memory card. Uh, I'm just doing the UMass Zero one. And normally, if that doesn't pop up, that means that there is something wrong with the micro... If, with the... Uh, the board itself. So you can go back and uh, check your settings and all that other fun stuff because it could be a plugin, uh, but most of the time it's going to be the board if you have everything set up properly. Uh, also check your micro SD card as well too. I have one micro SD card. I've already set it up for all of this, uh, meaning whenever I test one, I just pop it in there, load it into the Vita, and we're ready to rock at that point. But yeah, here it looks like we are good to go. So that means that it is alive and working and we're ready to rock. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching. I don't actually do it that way. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, a like would very much be appreciated. If you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well too. And uh, that was me at least uh, setting up two SD boards right there, two SD to Vita adapters. Um, again, I have this other one. I'm going to trust it. I think it looks good, but I'm not putting this wet thing in my Vita.